Fire ants, they're a very special type of ants. There's 10,000 species of ants, but um, a few species have learned to actually build structures, just like real architects and real engineers. And instead of using bricks, they themselves are the bricks. That also makes the 100,000 members of his ant colony excellent escape artists. I'm actually infamous for being the most hated professor in the biology department. Uh, and that's because the ants still build towers out of their container. So imagine coming in to work one day, opening your door and seeing an entire ant nest under your desk. He's been studying these mini Houdinis for years. First, focusing on the rafts they build to escape flash flooding in Brazilian rainforests. So the ants are basically building a waterproof fabric. They link their bodies together so that the spacing is small enough that water can't penetrate. They also carry small bubbles so they can actually breathe through the air in these bubbles. Now, he's unlocking their engineering secrets in the lab with the hopes of improving human architecture. When trapped or faced with an obstacle, the ants become a tower. Lower ants could support 400 times their body weight, but they don't have to. So if you were to build a rectangular tower, the ants would be supporting 100 ants on top of their head. But by building a, a tower that's uh, this profile, sort of uh, bell-shaped profile, each ant is only supporting three ants on top of its head. And that means every position on the tower is equally safe and no ants are getting damaged. On closer inspection, David reveals the structures are more alive than static. If you crush them, they sort of feel like an elastic solid, like a series of springs. But if you watch them for a long time, you'll see they'll flow. We saw that if viewed from the bottom, there are actually tunnels of mobile ants. These ants are, are free to move in these, these well-defined tunnels. And it's almost a river delta, they move and flow, and the ants join them and are able to exit the tower. So the whole tower moves and flows downwards, and new ants climb on top, and it's a, just a constant cycle. It's a whole new way of thinking about building materials. So these fire ants, they represent a new state of matter. You can see that they seem like a liquid because they're really filling this cup. But um, I can make them into a solid just by a flick of my wrist, just like this. And so now instantly, just based on the environmental forces, how much forces they feel, they've now become a solid ball. So this shows how versatile they are. In this experiment, ants squeeze through these tubes and then, with a little help, form a bridge. We get the ants to really build the bridges by scaring them. And what we do is we, we vibrate them at high frequency. And this simulates these bridges built in sort of unsteady atmosphere. When the ants feel this vibration, their automatic instinct is to bring their arms close together and tighten up the bridge. The bridge shortens in length by almost 50%. When it does so, it also becomes much stiffer and more resilient to vibration. And man, can they hold on. Yeah, the ants are incredibly versatile in how well they can grip each other. They have six legs, and the end of each leg is a this sticky pad and a claw. They can basically stick anywhere they want on each other. So an ant can stick to its head, its body, its thorax. Everywhere on the body is open territory to be grabbed. Thanks to a CT scan of interlocked ants, Hugh can figure out which ants make better bricks than others. This is a big ant, and this is a small ant. And you can see the big one has about, this has more than 20 connections with its neighbors. Many more than you can see here. That means these big ants really like to act like hubs, centerpieces where many ants can connect and strengthen the structure. A strong but very flexible building material. And this is exactly where the fluid solid behavior is important. If the bridge were completely solid, a crack would form. The ants will fill in the crack and um, make it whole again. So this perpetual motion allows them to sort of be ready for cracks at any position and to reform the bridge at any point in time. This kind of research is already paving the way for buildings of the future. Imagine a self-healing bridge. There's a dream of building self-healing materials. The world around us would be similar to the biological world. It's called modular robotics. And the tower is exactly an example of that. It's composed of small moving parts that when necessary, they can link themselves together and build a structure that's 80 times taller than just one of its parts. And it does it without any outside intervention. Just completely on its own. So you can imagine small robot ants going underneath the crack of a doorway, building a tower tall enough to grab the handle and open the door. Good news for architects, but a lot more itchy times ahead for Dr. Hugh's neighbors.